Hi, I'm Hetal, and next up with me is Lai Takmeng, Director, Group HR and Admin of Gamuda Berhad, the largest construction group in Malaysia and one of the largest in the region and also builders of the year in 2016. As HR Director, Takmeng is responsible for the group's strategic human resource direction and ensuring human capital sustainability and a culture of leadership excellence. Gamuda is a multiple finalist and winner of Malaysia's 100 leading graduate employers in the construction sector, and recently was awarded top employer brand for construction and property. Um, Kamuda was also awarded by Talent Corp Living the Values Award. Takmei yes, is a certified master performance coach and a wellness coach, and obviously a very well-renowned HR practitioner amongst the fraternity. He has over 25 years of experience and uh, something that you probably want to know as well, Tak Ming is my mentor and my ex-boss and somebody who I deeply respect. Thank, thank you so much, Tak Ming, for thank you, thank you. inaugurating our HR leadership series focused on transformation. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Great. So, Tak Ming, could it's you just... It's an honour to be here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe just very briefly, do you want to just share a bit of history about yourself? Well, I been in the HR field for the last 25 years. I started off actually in, uh, as a lecturer mm -hmm. uh, in, in a private college, yeah. and, uh, teaching physics, you know, and uh, I, I was a physics graduate myself. Mm -hmm. And so over the, the period of time, I transitioned from being a physics lecturer to become a HR practitioner. And basically, I was running uh, HR function for the last 25 years, interfacing between in the corporate uh, for a good uh, 20, 15 years, and then yeah. moving on into consulting, ran a consulting firm for a while where we met. Yes. And then after that, I came back to the corporate again uh, yeah. in the last five years. And how long have you been with Gamuda in total? Uh, I have two stints in Gamuda. The yeah. first was about nine, in, nine and a half years, and yeah. the second was uh, just completed five plus now. Yeah, very good, very loyal, huh? Yeah. Very, very loyal. Um, so, uh, Takmi, could you just share with us what is the biggest transformation that Gamuda is currently experiencing? Uh, that will probably move on for the next few years. Right. Uh, well, we're in the, in the cups of a, a big jump in terms of our organization size. Uh, mm. I would say uh, we have gone, come quite some distance from the time when we were in those days a smaller one project company. And uh, today uh, our, we are still a single project company, but we have grown to be. Uh, running huge projects, mm. uh, projects that are like uh, the MRT, then uh, before that was uh, our double electric bike double track that went from, Ke from uh, Ipoh all the way up to Padang Besar. Yeah. So these singular projects were huge, more than 10 billion in value and things mm. like that. But right now where we are, we're looking at uh, doubling the, the order book in the mm. next couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, from our current 10 billion, we expect our order book to increase to double that figure and looking at also doubling our, our property sales uh, from our current 2 billion to uh, the, about 4 billion within the next couple of years. Right. So at this point, it means that the company will have to significantly in, increase its, uh, its activities. Yeah. And uh, very likely, we have to see ourselves moving from a single project company to become what we call a multiple, multiple. project companies. Right. And uh, we may have to look at having uh, two or three huge projects running concurrently mm. uh, uh, instead of what we currently are doing, which is right. one single project at yeah. a time. So your revenue is going to double. Um, number of staff probably will increase by about 20, 30%. Uh, well, probably maybe up to 50%. 30 to 50% yeah. potentially. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have people moving uh, to ranks that are higher than they were in previous uh, times. That is correct. And in a faster pace as well. That is correct. How are you going to get people to accept and uh, take ownership of this buy-in in a very short period of time? I guess previously people could take long times, you know, five years, ten years to build themselves up. Yeah. You're going to move very fast. Yes. Uh, what is your key priority in getting people to accept it have their buy-in and continue to be super motivated as Gambuda increases double-fold? Well, it, it, it means that we need to, to give a lot more emphasis to the whole question about talent development and succession planning. Mm. Uh, and uh, so this has happened since the last two or three years. We have been working very hard to uh, bring in a lot of young talents mm -hmm. and uh, put them under guidance, 
Uh, we have a, what we call that, a development program for them. We have uh, mentoring and things like that. And to quickly accelerate their, their, their learning mm -hmm. so that uh, in the next few years, they are ready to take on team leadership responsibilities. Right. And in the, in, the, uh, in the process of doing this, uh, one of the things we, we obviously need to do is to drive through the message that talent development, succession planning is very, very important. Right. And this is where having a CEO who believes in it passionately yeah. and who drives it himself uh, makes a big difference. Yeah. Uh, it's not just a, a job that the HR can make happen. I totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. What does it sound like when a CEO who also decides to wear a hat of a CHRO versus a CEO who leaves it to a HR to sort things out. What do you see as a major difference between your CEO and potentially the others that you've uh, met in the past? Well, my, my CEO takes the trouble to actually walk with us to formulate the plans. Mm. And not only to formulate the plan, he takes personal ownership to then deliver the message to the, the team members, the colleagues, uh, and uh, all the senior leadership. Yeah. And in every one of his town halls that he has done so far, and, we, and over the last two years, we've done quite a few town halls, mm -hmm. he has actually taken the initiative to uh, preach the same message again and right. again and again, right. that uh, the future of Gamuda, the success of Gamuda, uh, how far can we go as a company in Gamuda, uh, depends entirely on its talent pool and on, on its talent resources. Right. So uh, I think the message is thinking through, and he himself had taken the trouble to, mm. to actually sit through the talent council meetings and to not only that, uh, but to have uh, the discussion sessions with uh, his uh, C minus one, C minus two, C minus three, and uh, talk about their strengths, their weaknesses, help them see where they, are, uh, they, are, they need improvement on, and took the trouble to actually coach some of these guys and mm. took them under the wings. Mm. So he, he himself, uh, became exemplary in yeah. becoming a mentor to some of these right. young people. I, I like people. how you were, you know, you mentioned earlier to me that there is some kind of a power that a CEO has yes. that is uniquely different from the power that anybody else has in a company. Uh, could you share a little bit more about that? Right. I, I think there are a lot of studies that have shown that a CEO has uh, exceptional weightage, uh, you want to call it, uh, when it comes to influencing the culture of the organization or influencing the direction in which an organization should go. Mm. Uh, I think it has to do with the power of the CEO, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so you will find that in an organization where the CEO is a golfer, yeah. you will find that uh, there will be a lot mm, of people who play golf. Golfers, you know? yeah. And uh, if your CEO is the partying type, then there will be a, you know, there will be a partying culture. Very you know? true. Yeah. Uh, so in, in that sense, mm. uh, the, if the, the CEO himself is driving and uh, pushing for a culture of excellence, pushing for a culture where uh, uh, the developing of people becomes pertinent, yeah. uh, then it gives an uh, extra boost uh, to the whole process. Totally agree. I've seen that happening and it works like magic. It really, really reduces the time taken to get breakthroughs. Yeah. 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 Because if the HR guy is going to be in the, uh, doing all this driving himself yeah. or herself, I can assure you, uh, because at the end of the day, HR guys are not uh, income generators, right? Yeah. You, you, you will find that it is a lot less effective and you have to do a lot more uh, selling and uh, getting the buying in. Yeah. So, Tak Wing, you mentioned that HR directors are not revenue generators and therefore may not have the most power in an organisation. In one word, what would you call uh, HR directors or HR leaders? Well, what would their role be, their primary role? I think if... HR directors are incisive advisors. It makes a big difference. Right. Uh, the ability to, to cite up situation, understand what is happening on the ground level and be able to give insight to mm -hmm. the, C, the senior management to help them see where they need to pay attention to. Right. So I guess CEOs take the lead in a lot of these conversations and CHROs or HR directors would probably be uh, internal advisors slash facilitators of sorts. Exactly. Great. So when it comes to cascading, so you've got your CEOs who are doing a great job. These days, I guess a lot more are taking on board that role yeah. of HR. Right. Uh, as they pass this message down, uh, it goes on to the business leaders to continue and, uh, to cascade this all the way to the bottom. Right. What do you find is the biggest gap that business leaders, when they take the message on, what kind of gaps do you see them uh, mm. having mm. Uh, in order to cascade this down effectively? Mm. I suppose one of the big challenges is that there's a tendency for people who are at the senior management to meet management is that they see themselves as 
uh, drivers for results. Right. right? And that's uh, uh, only to be expected because organizations expect results. Absolutely. But when you are drivers for results, there's also the tendency for you to look at numbers and numbers. And so it becomes a number game. Yeah. And sometimes it becomes a body shop as well. Mm. And you, you find that uh, they, they, when they talk about uh, the manpower is how many head count. Right. But then head count does not necessarily translate to the right competencies. Sure. And I think uh, the, uh, the next level of leadership needs to understand that there are three things here that's involved. That's the, the, the capacity, mm -hmm. which is more numbers and numbers, head counts. Yeah. And that's what you mean by body shop, right? Yes, okay. that's right. And then, and then there is this thing called the capability, which mm -hmm. is the competencies and skills. Right. Uh, and these two must work hand in hand and mm. for you to be able to actually have a real effective uh, team going yeah. forward. But there is a third thing that often is missed out mm. and that's the other C, the mm. culture side of it. Mm. So you have capability, you have capacity, mm. but you also need to have the culture. culture yeah. And every head of HOD mm. uh, must begin to realize that it is not just about having enough headcount numbers, yeah. but also to have ensure that these guys have the right skill sets mm. and the competencies to do the job. Yeah. But more than anything else, these people must be people with the right values, the right motivation, the right drive, they are engaged, yeah. they are committed to the organization, they yeah. take personal ownership of what's happening. Then you see results. That's then very you difficult see though, right? Because they've got all the business numbers to drive for and then now they've yes. got to make sure that they're getting the right people, the right culture, the right values on top of that, the competencies and the numbers. Yep. You know, what is a simple advice that you give to business leaders so that they can simplify this process uh, going forward while trying to generate uh, business or, or, or services for the company? Well, there's no shortcut to it, but yeah. the truth of the matter is that uh, HODs need to become their own uh, HR directors, yeah. they need to be committed to recognizing that uh, as a general manager, mm. uh, their role is not just about results and, and the business side of things, but also about developing the people they have. Right. And that is a uh, must have. Yeah. So you can't not, run away from yeah, that. It's not something that you, you just say that there's a one, one, one time fix solution. No. Pretty much doing exactly what the CEO is doing. Yes. Yeah. So all HODs must recognize that mm. if you are going to be successful, mm. you must have a successful team with you. Mm. And if you're going to have a successful team, then these three things comes in. Right. Have the right numbers, the, capa the capacity of it. Have the right skill sets, the cap capability of it. Yeah. But also have the right culture. culture. The people yeah. whom you work with must be people who are, are able to bring the company forward. You know, really beautiful in theory. Mm. Um, what is the consistent and constant challenge that you have? in getting this implemented in practice? Okay, uh, I guess the key word here is sustainability. Mm. How do you ensure that this become part of the organization's culture mm. and uh, the DNA of the organization? Right. Uh, that's why in Gamuda, what we have done as uh, of late, we have re revised our core values, mm -hmm. uh, what we used to have. We have now uh, considered those as uh, done deal. Yeah. And we have moved on to another set of core values that right. we see it as something that we want to aspire for. Right. And one of the core elements there is about uh, the passion to develop people. Mm. And if you set it as part of your DNA of the organization, mm. that you have this passion to develop people, mm. And you, you want to keep reminding people right. again and again and again that this is what we want to do, mm. and that is to grow our people. Yeah. And it is not an uh, add-on, yeah. but it is part of our DNA. I guess then that sets the tone for who you hire, yes. um, how you do your performance appraisal, yes. who gets moved on to the next level exactly. as well. Uh, and I think that's really brilliant. I think a lot of companies are moving forward from having KPIs that are competency-based to KPIs that are more value-driven as well. That's right. Um, uh, great. So now, with regards to business leaders, there is a lot of challenges over there. But with regards to HR, how do you tend to innovate? What is the most critical thing that you're going to do to accelerate the growth of Gamuda in a short period of time? Um, what would be the one thing that you'd be focused on the next few years? Okay. Uh, we have moved through a phase, what we call a consolidation phase. Mm -hmm. And today, our key 
our core business uh, units are much bigger now. Mm. And uh, our Gamuda engineering and our Gamuda land uh, are in themselves uh, perhaps the size of a, a uh, public listed company. Right. So uh, what uh, increasingly we realize is uh, the speed in which things happen mm. uh, is best done when you decentralize. Right. And uh, to some extent, uh, that's what we are planning to do. And yeah. uh, what I intend to do at my end is to develop strong business the driven HR team mm. in each of these uh, uh, business units right. and let them lead the show. Mm. Let them take on the strategic direction. Let them drive their own uh, mm. uh, HR uh, initiatives mm. and so on and so forth. Mm. And my role then would be to see how I can support and enable them. Mm -hmm. uh, the principle of servant leadership, yeah. where instead of you taking on the uh, power and authority and wanting everybody to report to you, you want to let them take charge of things. Yeah. You want to let them be the one to uh, drive and get the results. Mm. And as a result, uh, when they are successful, then you know you have become successful. Right. So who are these people? What are their backgrounds? Are they you know, generally business uh, of, of business background or the HR background? Uh, who would be leading all of these um, smaller, decentralized um, units that you are talking about? Well, of course, they, they need to have strong HR background. Right. There's no denying that. Mm. But I think more important than that uh, is that I, I need leaders who are strategic, mm. leaders who have strong critical thinking right. and uh, uh, the ability to uh, look ahead and to see what is necessary. Yeah. Critical thinking is an, an art that is very uh, in short supply today. Mm. Uh, people who are able to dive deep and see what are the core issues, right. uh, what are the fundamental problems rather than dealing with the symptoms. Right. But over and above that, criti critical thinking must also mean you are able, you are able to draw the the key issues together and see the trend and then look ahead and have that big picture perspective. What, what's happening here? Where do we need to go from mm -hmm. here? And that's the kind of leaders I need. And secondly, the other very important characteristics I, I need to see from these leaders are their ability to have this thing called self-reflection. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. This self-reflection allows people to step backward and look uh, or step back a, a, a pace uh, and look at what's happening here mm. and ask yourself question. And this is where it goes back to my earlier point where uh, a good HR guy is not only just a driver and a results getter, mm. but a good HR guy is someone who is insightful, yeah. who can actually give key and important feedback mm. to, to your colleagues when you, have, when you uh, see issues on the ground. Right. And that can only happen when you are able to step back a little bit, look at what's happening and reflect on what's mm. going on. Yeah. Again, beautiful in uh, theory. Um, how does a HR folk who graduates out of a HR degree uh, begin to have all these amazingly unique skills called introspection, insight, critical thinking, strategic thinking, and also, obviously, ultimately, uh, the art of being able to influence? Um, and still get idea. the results. And get the results. Yeah. So it's a real, real far cry as to what they are being educated or schooled for. Um, how did you get to where you got to? What is the most important thing that a HR folk who wants to be able to get to this stage, well, what, what should they do? The one thing that they should do? I, I don't have a magic bullet here, yeah. to be very frank. But I think, uh, taking from my own personal experience, uh, having worked for a period of time in a consulting outfit, yeah. uh, that, that actually uh, gave me a new uh, insight, a new experience as to uh, how I should work and how I right. should do things. I, I think for you, it wasn't just about working in a consulting role. It was also running a business of sorts yep. um, in that consulting business yeah. that you were in. Um, yeah. And that probably gave you a lot more insight okay. how companies run, yep. how other companies are doing, how you consult them. Yes. Um, so that, that's the major plus uh, in the sense that uh, yeah. I, I could now be able to see what are the key business drivers, yeah. for example. And I could understand mm. that my line managers, what would be their concerns and issues because I was in that position. Right. And uh, then at the same time, the opportunity to get involved uh, and to provide uh, consulting services to big companies uh, require you to be able to look 
dive deep, understand their concerns, understand what are the issues versus the symptoms, Correct. and then the, to be able to pick up the trends and help them to see where to go. Yeah. So yes, I would say that helped me tremendously. Right. I don't know if uh, every other HR person should go through the process, yeah. but I do think that a, a good HR person who have done a stint in uh, in the business side of things, yeah. actually, would be uh, yeah. would be able to strengthen their own core. Absolutely, strength. I mean, job rotation is critical. Yeah. Um, I, I think we've kind of uh, gotten a very good understanding from your perspective of how to run things as a HR director, which is obviously not an easy thing. No, it's not. It's not an easy thing at all. <laughs> no, but no. thank you so much for being with us here, Takming. Any yeah. final words to our friends back home who are tuning in? Well, the. HR today is no longer the same as HR in those days. No. Uh, there's a lot of people who tend to, uh, unfortunately, still focus on processes and uh, on policies and become gatekeepers yeah. and, and things like that. Which is important, but Which not, is important, yeah. but it's not the only thing. Yeah. In fact, I think the bigger challenge now for HR is how do you ensure the success of your colleagues who are in the line function, who are out there uh, to uh, fighting for the company, to be a success for mm. themselves. If they can be successful, then it means that you are You've successful. Your so you, yeah. you need to start thinking of yourself as a service provider, internal mm. service provider to your internal customers yeah. and make the difference. Yeah. And that's where it's going to be the cutting edge, not just to become a, uh, a what do you call that, gatekeeper. Mm. I like this analogy and I hope mm. I'll end with this here. Yes, a football please. analogy. Please. You know, I, I, I love football, watching, right. not playing. Uh, it, there's a difference between you're one of those I'm <laughs> yeah, <armchair>. but, <laughs> but, but, but Tang Ming is very fit la, so I, I can't say you're one of those uh, but, so what's the analogy but there's a difference between a goalkeeper and a goalkeeper who initiates mm. uh, uh, the uh, counter attack mm. uh, the, a good goalkeeper save shots prevent uh, a goal mm. but a better goalkeeper save shots and immediately launch a counter attack mm. by being visionary and seeing where his colleagues are. Mm. And you think about it, the goalkeeper is right at the back, but he can see everything. Mm. And I suggest a good HR person should be something like that. Right. Interesting. Interesting. I want to think about that. Yeah, yeah. I probably want to think about that. And if you want to get in touch with Tang Ming, uh, he is a great person to have a conversation with. Very difficult to catch, but I'm sure if you find him on LinkedIn and ping him, he'll be happy to have a quick coffee. <laughs> um, Potentially, you, potentially, yeah. if, if you're as lucky as I am. Uh, thank you so much, Takmi, for being with us. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.